हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माय सेल्फ सोनल लाड असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट के कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कोल्हापुर आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द कोर्स लीनियर इंटीग्रेटेड सॉकेट्स दिस कोर्स एम्स एट प्रोवाइडिंग द बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर एंड इट्स लीनियर एंड नॉन लीनियर अप्लीकेशन द फर्स्ट यूनिट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज अबाउट डिफरेंशियल एम्पलीफायर्स so the integrated circuits are nothing but the compact arrangement of transistors resistors capacitors and electronic components that are interconnected on a single semiconductor substrate or chip it it gives us the reduced size lower power consumption improved reliability and increased performance there are various types of ics available to us such as analog ics analog ics are designed to process the continuous signals that can be used in the applications such as audio signals then digital ics are used to process the discrete signals digital ics are used in the applications such as computers and memory devices then there are mixed signal ics the mixed signal ics can be used to process both types of signals analog as well as digital signals then the linear integrated circuits are the ones which are used to process the signal so that the output will be linear with respect to the input so that is why they are called as linear integrated circuits now an amplifier is nothing but an electronic device that increases the amplitude or power of the signal it takes a weak signal as an input and produces a stronger output signal a differential amplifier is a type of amplifier that amplifies the difference between the two input signals while rejecting any common mode signals common mode signals are the signals that are available at the input terminals of the transistors these differential amplifiers are the basic building blocks of the operational amplifiers abbreviated as opamps these differential amplifiers are used in the applications such as audio amplification signal conditioning and communication systems now i would like to ask you all a question you can pause this video and try to think upon this question in amplifier the transistor operates in which region welcome back students the question that i have i had asked you is that in amplifier the transistor operates in which region the answer is that in amplifier the transistor operates in active region the transistor can be operated in three regions cutoff re region saturation region and active region out of these three in cutoff and saturation region the transistor acts as a switch whereas in active region the transistor can be operated as an amplifier now why the active region is selected because in that particular region the transistor can successfully amplify the signal it is the curve of the characteristics where the output that has been produced by the transistor will be linear with respect to the input signal that is the signal will be satisfactorily amplified by the transistor and that is why the active region is preferred for the transistors to work as an amplifier now in order to construct a differential amplifier we'll make use of the emitter bias circuit now for the proper operation of the transistor its collector base junction should be reverse biased whereas its emitter base emitter junction should be forward biased now as we know that generally the collector should be at the highest potential the base at slightly lower potential and the emitter should be the low at lowest potential in operate uh, in order to get this we can connect the collector terminal to the positive supply voltage and emitter to the negative supply voltage and the forward biasing at the base emitter junction can be achieved by connecting the base terminal to the ground through a resistor now in order to construct a differential amplifier we can make use of 
two similar emitter biased sockets. Now, in order to do that, we need a matched pair of transistor. Now, what is the meaning of matched pair of transistor? It means that the transistors should be identical in their characteristics. So, here we can consider two transistors Q1 and Q2 which have got the same characteristics. Here, if you can see, at the collector terminal, there is a resistor RC1 which is connected to positive supply voltage. Then at the emitter terminal, there is another resistor RE1 which is connected to the negative supply voltage and the base terminal of the transistor is been connected to the ground. Now, we will construct a differential amplifier with the help of this emitter biased circuits. So, now in order to do that, first of all what we should do, we should collect their collector terminals together and they should be connected to a positive supply. This is the first condition. The second condition is that we should apply some input voltage at the base terminal and then the emitter terminal should be connected together so that the resistors RE1 and RE2 will come in parallel and it will show a single resistor that is RE. Okay. So, now with this condition we will try to construct a differential amplifier with the help of two emitter biased circuits. So, let us draw the circuit. Now, when we consider a matched pair of transistor, the collector resistors at both of the transistors RC1 should be equal to RC2, which is given as RC. Okay. Now, for Q1, resistors that is been connected at the collector terminal is RC. Now, at the base of this Q1, we will connect a source voltage say V in 1 similarly for Q2 A resistor that is available at the collector side is RC. Similarly, at the base, we will apply another voltage source. Since it is a differential amplifier, it will amplify the difference between the two input signals supplied. Now, the first condition is that we should collect connect their collector terminals together and should be connected at the positive supply voltage say plus VCC. Then we have applied two input voltages to the respective base terminals of Q1 and Q2 called as V in 1 and V in 2 and their emitter resistances have been connected together and while we connect them together they will come in parallel and it will form a single register that will be a parallel combination of RE1 and RE2. So, a single resistor that can be connected at the emitter side is RE which is basically a parallel combination of RE1 and RE2 and that resistor should be connected to the negative supply voltage minus VEE. The current entering at the base terminal is IB. The current flowing through the collector terminals are IC. And now at the emitter side of Q1, the current that is flowing through the emitter terminal of this Q1 is let us call it as IE. And that of Q2 is also IE that is the emitter current. So, the total current that is flowing through the resistor RE will be equal to IE plus IE that is 2 IE.
So, this is the total current that will be flowing through the resistor R E. Now, here the voltage output voltage is measured across the collector terminals of the two transistors. So, with the help of two emitter biased circuits, we can construct a differential amplifier in this way. So, in order to do that, what we did, we took a matched pair of transistors that has got the same electrical characteristics. Then, we have tied their collector terminals together and we have applied a common positive voltage to their collector, uh, collector terminals through the collector resistors RC. Then, we have applied the input voltages at the base terminals of Q1 and Q2 called as V in 1 and V in 2 respectively. Then, in order to have an emitter resistor, we collected, connected their emitter terminals together so that RE1 which is the emitter resistor of Q1 and RE2 which is the emitter resistor of Q2, they will come in parallel. And the parallel combination of RE1 and RE2 is collectively called as a single resistor that is RE. Now, the current that is flowing through the base terminal of this Q1 is called as IB1, whereas the current that is flowing through the base terminal of Q2 is called as IB2. The current that is flowing through the collector terminals, they are called as IC, whereas the color current that is flowing through the RE will be equal to 2 IE. The output can be measured across the two collector terminals of these transistors. So, this is how we can construct a differential amplifier with the help of two emitter biased circuits. And always remember, in order to construct a differential amplifier, we need a matched pair of transistors. That is, they should be identical in their electrical characteristics. Now, there are the four different configurations of this differential amplifier. How these configurations have been made? The configurations have been made according to the number of inputs and the way in which the output voltage has been measured. If the number of inputs are 2, then the differential amplifier is said to be a dual input, otherwise it is a single input. If the output voltage is measured across the two collector terminals of the transistors, then the output voltage is called as the balanced output. If the output voltage is measured at any one of the collector terminals of the transistor with respect to ground, then that output voltage is referred as the unbalanced output. Now, when we measure the voltage across the two collector terminals, that output voltage is called as the balanced output. Now, why it is called as the balanced output? Because both the collectors are at the same DC potential. Therefore, the output that has been measured across the two collector terminals is referred as the balanced output. In unbalanced output, the voltage is measured at one of the collectors with respect to the ground. So, this is how the differential and amplifiers can be configured in four ways. First one is the dual input balanced output differential amplifier, dual input unbalanced output differential amplifier, single input balanced output differential amplifier and single input unbalanced output differential amplifier. So, the differential amplifiers have been configured based upon the number of inputs whether dual input or single input and the way in which the output voltage has been measured whether between the two collector terminals then it is called as a balanced output and if it is if the output voltage is measured at any one of the collector terminals with respect to the ground, then it is called as the unbalanced output differential amplifier. So, here I have shown the four configurations. In the first diagram, if you see, it is the dual input balanced output differential amplifier. In this, the two voltages has been applied as an inputs to the two transistors at their base terminals. And the voltage has been measured across the two collector terminals. Now, in case of dual input unbalanced output differential amplifier, again the inputs have been applied to both of the input terminals that uh, both of the input terminals that is at both of the base terminals of the transistors. And here if you see the output voltage has been measured at the collector terminal of Q1 with respect to the ground. 
Therefore, this configuration is referred as the dual input unbalanced output differential amplifier. Now, in the next single input balanced output differential amplifier, here if you can see the input voltage has been applied at the base terminal of Q1, whereas the base terminal of Q2 has been connected to ground and the output voltage has been measured between the two collector terminals of Q1 and Q2. Therefore, this configuration is referred as the single input balanced output differential amplifier. And the last one is the single input unbalanced output differential amplifier where the input signal has been applied to the base terminal of Q1 whereas the base terminal of Q2 has been connected to the ground and again the output voltage has been measured at the collector terminal of Q1 with respect to the ground. Therefore, this configuration is referred as the single input unbalanced output differential amplifier. So, the differential amplifier configurations have been derived in terms of the number of inputs, dual input or single input and the way in which the output voltage has been measured. That is, if the output voltage has been measured between the two collector terminals, then that output is referred as balanced output. Why balanced output? Because both the collector terminals are at the same DC potential. And if the output voltage is measured at any one of the collector terminal with respect to the ground, then that output is referred as the unbalanced output. So, in this session, we have studied about the differential amplifier configurations. Now, these differential amplifiers are used as the basic building blocks of the operational amplifiers. The first two stages of the operational amplifiers are the dual input balanced output differential amplifier and dual input unbalanced output differential amplifier. So, in the next session, we are going to focus on dual input balanced output differential amplifier, which is the first stage of the operational amplifier. Thank you.